Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This will be episode 8 of my Practical Logic series, and in today's episode I'm going to be going over how to build a multiple floor elevator. So I went ahead and built a six floor elevator for demonstration purposes, and I chose six floors because it has this nice neat looking control panel. But this version has all the bells and whistles, I have lights uh, indicating uh, which floor you're going to, uh, red lights indicating when the system is in use. I have a manual reset system here. And while it may look like a wiring nightmare, all of the components are fairly easy to build. It just takes a lot of different connections to get it to work. This elevator works by taking advantage of these two circuits here. This is your input. When you turn it on, it can only be turned off by this AND. You cannot turn this circuit on by putting an input into this AND. It can only be turned off. So this is your input, and there will be one of these in every control panel for each floor you can go to, and it is connected up to this circuit here, and this is your floor control circuit. It determines which floor you're going to, and will reset the system when you're at that floor. So this is your input and output from your control circuit, and it gets wired into there. And then this is your output from the control circuit, and it gets wired back in. So now, if we set this to high, this is now set as the floor that you are going to. And once you hit the area trigger, it'll reset everything back to normal. And this is just a pulse limiter here. It's a low pulse limiter and a memory cell. So that's all this is. This is it's not a very complicated circuit. There's just a lot of them and a lot of connections to make. But I will show you exactly how to build this circuit and how to set up the entire system. In the interest of time, I went ahead and built the frame already. And this has the doors into the elevator and then each of the doors in the deck floor. So another thing is, in this demonstration, I have the decks all adjacent to each other, but if you have a gap between your decks, you'll have to have a floor here and a separate ceiling on the deck below, but they sh should both be treated as they are shared as if they are adjacent to each other. So now to build the control circuits, I just want to place a blue light or any kind of indicator which floor you are on. You can have a whole bunch of activators but I think it's best to keep the activators in line and block out the floor you are on. So now the actual control is an activator selected with C and then an AND, select that AND and back into the activator and that is your control. Now we could build that over and over again or we can simply go into advanced build mode by holding control and selecting an area big enough to encompass it and copy. So that's too wide or too long. And now we just want to copy and paste and we can paste that wherever we need it to be. And it's a simple connection but it does speed things up a lot. So now we'll need the actual door controls, um, the floor deck controls. So that is done by putting an activator just put it in line with the door and then selecting those activators and placing down some knots. Those knots are shift V into the doors themselves to select them all. Now we'll just have to take the uh, individual deck selections and wire them into the door controls. So this is the selection to floor 2 and you'll just need to open up floor, you know, between floor 1 and floor 2. This is the floor 3, so you'll need to open floor 2 and floor 3 in order to get there. And then this one sets you down to floor 1, so you just need to open floor 1, and this one sets you up to floor 2, and so you just have to open up floor 2. So you'll need to set these up, each button up, to open every floor between the floor you are on and the deck you are going to. So you can see it gets fairly tedious if you have a lot of floors, and that's half of what this wiring nightmare is. 
So this is floor one, so I'll need to open all floors below me. And this is floor two, so I'll just have to open the one floor. Next up, I'll show you how to build the floor control module. And to do that, we'll need to just build a memory cell. So start by placing an AND signal, select it, and then place an OR signal. Select that and hit V on the AND. So now that they're both linked to each other, this is a um, memory cell. So then we want to deselect it and then place our area control trigger, and then on top of that, our activation module. This activation module will be our low pulse limiter. So you want to select that activator and then place a NOT gate as well as an OR. Select that OR with C and connect it to the AND from the memory cell and then back to the activator. Next up, select the NOT signal with C and place a delay. Select that delay and then connect it to the OR signal below it. So that is a low pulse limiter. Each time it is switched, it'll send a low pulse. So when you select the floor, this memory cell will be set high, and then once the area control trigger sets off this pulse limiter, it'll reset the memory cell. So now we just have to build one of these on every floor, or you can simply copy and paste it. So just have to set up an area big enough, copy, and paste one on every floor, which is much nicer than having to build it over and over again. So next up, we'll have to uh, connect each input from our control panels into their respective floors. So let's start with flo the floor one controller. So we want to take a floor one selection and connect it to the OR from the memory cell. And then the next floor one selection into the OR. So that is your input from the control panels. And then do the same thing with floor two and floor three. Now we have to take the outputs from this circuit and that is the activator from the pulse limiter. So floor one will get wired into all of the floor one switches. Floor two will get wired into all the floor two switches. And floor three will get wired into all of the floor three switches. So that will enable us to select each floor. So this is floor two, and you can see the floor two pulse or uh, memory cell is set. And once I hit this activator here, it'll reset. So now you can actually wire up the area controllers. And it doesn't matter where you place them. You can place them right next to the door. You can place them on the ceiling, on the floor. It doesn't matter. It just has to be in here somewhere for you to trip. Um, the only thing is, it cannot block your input from the control panel. So we just have to do that for every floor. I like putting them in the ceiling. And you just have to make sure you leave a space there. So once that's done, we can also rig up the, door con the outer door controls now. So you just have to place an OR signal anywhere, and then from the memory cell OR, you just connect them from each area control trigger, so C and then V. And then select that OR, and you can shift V on all of the doors. So now, once you select a floor, the doors will close behind you, stopping anybody from entering. So lastly, for this, all we need to do is set up the gravity. So you just need to arrange the gravity so the arrows are facing up and wire a gravity module into any switch that is going up. So first floor will always be going up. So up and up. So just select the activators. And you have to select the activators for this. You cannot select the AND gate. And the top floor does not need any because everything is going down. So we have one last step before this is a functioning elevator, and that is our gravity reset. To do that, you'll just need to place an area controller, an activation module next to it, select that activation module, 
and put down a downwards facing gravity unit. Select the area controller with C and we want to place our area triggers in the space between here. So, what, so that when you're upside down and try to walk out the door, your gravity will be reset. So we now have a functioning elevator. I can walk in and hit floor 3 and I will be taken to floor 3 and then when I try to walk out my gravity will be reset. And then I can also go down to floor 2, down to floor 1, and then up to floor 2 if I so choose. And the gravity switching is a little disorienting, but you get used to it. So now you have a functioning elevator, and if that's all you want, you can stop here. Um, but if you want a couple optional features, I'll show you how to add those. So first off, let's add the lights. and just turn them off right away. So these will be your selected floor lights and wiring them up is simple. Just select the uh, memory cell from our floor control module and just V on all of the lights for that floor. So now when I go in here and select a floor the lights for that floor will be on. Now if you want just lights to turn on when the elevator is in use, you can select the ore that controls the doors and put down some red lights saying elevator is in use. So now when I select the floor, the lights will be on, the doors will be closed, and then these lights will be on as well and then to separate that out if you don't want those wired directly into that off of the memory cell you'll need to take you know, off of the memory cell from each floor control module you'll need to put down a knot just keep it a little separate and those will have to be on, so you can just take an activator, wire it to it, and toggle that real quick, and those will be on. So off of this ore, you'll want an AND, and then those knots go into the ANDs as well. So these will be your floor controls. Or your floor light controls. So now when a floor is selected the lights for every other floor will be on except the one that is selected. Now the last optional component is just a way to reset everything just in case there's any kind of malfunctions which there shouldn't be so to do that we just want to take this activator select it with C and turn it into a low pulse limiter so once again it is a knot and an OR select that OR into the activator select the knot put in a delay and then that delay into the OR so now we have a low pulse limiter and then once you wire this into the active all the other pulse limiters the activator from all the other pulse limiters for each floor controller it'll basically just reset everything so if you ever have two floors that get selected toggling that will clear it so other thing to note if you select multiple floors it'll always take you to the furthest floor so it won't that won't break it so if I hit 5 and 1 it'll take me to 1 it doesn't care 5 will show up as selected until I pass through um, but it won't let me go any further the only um, you can also choose which floor you are on the way down so you can fake people out if they're expecting you to show up on one floor um, 
That's what the manual reset does. Uh, the only way to really break this is to select a floor and then deselect that floor. And now you're kind of locked in the elevator and it will not unlock until you actually go to that floor. Or if you um, manually reset the gravity, reset your gravity, it'll automatically unlock the door. So it's kind of a safety feature. They just have, you have to know it's there in order to use it. Well, uh, that should about cover it for how to build a multiple floor elevator. I know it's a little bit of a connection nightmare, but it shouldn't be too hard to actually do. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.